We're going to venture a little bit outside of the sports media realm today and focus strictly on the mainstream media. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start off with Dwayne Wade. This dude, I don't know what happened to Dwayne Wade. Well, I do know what happened to him. He married the Wicked Witch of the Woke. Men are supposed to be leaders. Women naturally gravitate towards the emotional strength that men are supposed to have. Now, when you're married to a beta male like Dwayne Wade, it forces the woman into a leadership position. I mean, after all, someone's got to be the leader of the family. You can't allow the fucking kids to lead, although that is exactly what some parents are doing. I'll show you an example of that in just a second. I was researching this story on Fox News, which I'm about to share with you. And while doing my research, I came across an article in USA Today about Dwayne Wade. Headline of the article, Dwayne Wade is afraid for daughter Zaya to leave the house. My first thought when I read that was, here we go again with this same bullshit. Remember a couple of years ago, LeBron James claimed that he was afraid to leave his mansion because one of the white cops on his security payroll might shoot him because of his skin color. Remember that? Now, that is not the reason Dwayne Wade is afraid for young Zaya to leave home. He is afraid for Zaya to leave home because he's transgender. Uh, that is a choice that you allowed your young son to make. Let me show you how big of a beta male Dwayne Wade has become. And I hate to be so harsh on him. D. Wade used to be one of my favorite players in the NBA. I don't usually attend regular season NBA games. I'll go every once in a while if it's a big game late in the season. But for the most part, I only attend the playoffs. I went to Dwayne Wade's final game in New Orleans. I like to watch him play. I was never a fan of the Heat, but I used to have a lot of respect for Dwayne Wade. I can no longer respect the man that he's become. This dude openly admitted to USA Today that he has a lot of respect for his daughter for having the strength and the courage to become a girl. While it took him eight years, eight years, to tell his personal chef that he doesn't like cilantro on his hamburgers. No fucking wonder Gabrielle Union is the head of that household. The so-called man of the house is afraid to hurt the feelings of the hired help. With that one admission, it all started to make sense. I can now fully understand how Dwayne Wade allowed his son to become his daughter. If you don't have the balls to tell your personal chef how you like your hamburger, you damn sure don't have the balls to stand up to your wife and child. Every day when I am preparing these videos, I have Fox News on in the background. Most of the time, the TV's on mute. I like to have complete silence when I'm putting together all my thoughts, all my ideas. But every so often, I will look up at the screen just to see, just to see what's happening in the country that day. Yesterday, I look up at the screen and I see this story on Fox News about a family out in California. I see this nice picture of the Whittington family. It's your typical all-American family. Two parents, not mom and mom or dad and dad. This is a normal family, an actual man and an actual woman. The Whittingtons, they were blessed with what appeared to be two beautiful, healthy children. More specifically, they were blessed with two beautiful, healthy daughters. There was just one small problem. At the ripe old age of five, one of their daughters was given a diagnosis. KC, was it the Covey? No, no, it wasn't the Fauci fungus. It must have been that damn monkeypox. No, no, it wasn't the Covey 4.0 either. One of the daughters of this seemingly all-American family was diagnosed with the ultimate myth, the myth of all myths, the diagnosis that claims God made a mistake at birth. It's the diagnosis woke parents across the country are thrilled to hear. Gender dysphoria. When I was growing up, we called it confusion. In this world of modern medicine, these woke psychologists, they had to have a nice medical term for everything, so they now call it gender dysphoria. According to the NHS, gender dysphoria is defined as the sense of unease that a person may have because of a mismatch between their biological sex and their gender identity. 
Just in case you missed the woke memo, there's now a difference between your sex and your gender. Yeah, I know this can be a hard concept to grasp. Just because you're born with a dicky doesn't mean you're little Ricky. You can also be Rochelle, the female version of Ricky. When the Whittingtons were told by their five-year-old daughter that he was really a boy, they were naturally stunned. They were shocked. They didn't know what to do. Now, there are several options here. One, you can realize your child is five and you ignore it. My five-year-old nephew's constantly telling me what he is. He's something different every day. One day he's a gator, the next he's a roach, the next he's a fireman, police officer, he's in the army. His imagination's running wild. Thankfully, though, he's never told me that he's a girl. If he did, I'd dunk his head in the toilet. Option two, you could consult with your pastor or a qualified therapist. When I say qualified therapist, I'm not talking about a graduate from Woke U. And when I say pastor, I'm not talking about Pastor Jalen Rose at Woke United Methodist. I'm talking about people with functioning brains. Someone that could sit with your five-year-old daughter and figure out why she wants to be a boy. First of all, figure out where the fuck she learned this shit. What kind of five-year-old is worried about their gender identity? At that age, why would this even be a concern? The biggest worry my five-year-old nephew has is running out of boogers to eat for lunch. Where did a child at this age learn about gender identity? Option three, you take your daughter at face value. You believe your five-year-old daughter when she says, I'm really a boy. You do whatever it takes to have your daughter reincarnated and transformed into the son you never had. Now, if I had to guess, most parents would go with option one. What option did the Whittingtons choose? Watch for yourself. Before Ryland could even speak, he managed to tell his parents that he is a boy. I could just see it. It wasn't him trying to be... A brat, it was like painful. It was truly painful for him to have to wear feminine clothing and, and for us constantly telling him that you're a girl. And unlike some trans kids, when Ryland came out at age five a few years later, he had the full support of his parents. Initially, there was some pushback from us in yeah. trying to understand this. We were confused like most people are. We thought that gender and sexuality were the same thing. It took us a while to figure out that those two things are different and that Children actually do recognize their gender identity very young. Some of them, not all. But they listen to Rylan and to Hillary's conservative faith. For me, it's just a deep spiritual belief that you believe in God and he, you know, created us the way he wanted us. Well, then, yes, he created Rylan just the way he is. This segment was not aired on CNN. This wasn't MSNBC or ESPN. If I saw a 30 for 30 about the Whittington family on ESPN, wouldn't be all that surprising. Join us as we share the story of Ryland Whittington, who dreams of becoming the male version of Leah Thomas. This wasn't an expose in the New York Times or Washington Post. This was on Fox News. Fox News. The one network in the mainstream media that's supposed to be immune from the woke fungus. We have all these other networks, all these other media outlets dedicated to spreading the good word. Come join us for Sunday services at Woke United Methodist. We will baptize you in the woke bath and violate your bum with the woke hug. Fox News is supposed to be the lone network dedicated to being the voice of normal people. And they decide to promote this bullshit? When I saw this segment yesterday, I immediately Googled Brian Linus. Brian Linus, he was the correspondent for this story. I'd never heard of the guy, so I was curious. I looked him up. Imagine my surprise when I find out that he is a member of the LGBT community and is what he describes as one of the only gay minorities working at Fox News. Oh, News Corp is obviously concerned with keeping their ESG scores up. Look at us. We're all about inclusion. We have a gay Latino working as a news correspondent. Ignore all those beautiful blonde women. Focus on the gay Latino. Inclusion, inclusion, diversity. The same day that this segment aired, Fox reported a story out of Michigan. A middle school in Fraser, Michigan, hid the transgender status of one of their students 
from the parents. At school, the student went by their preferred pronouns, went by a completely different name than what they were called at home. Basically, at school, the kid had one identity. At home, they had another one. Hmm. I wonder why transgender youth are so fucking confused. There has been serious backlash towards the segment about the Whittington family on Fox News. Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, every big name in conservative media has called out Fox News for this bullshit. Some are even calling for Brian Lannis and other behind the segment to be fired. And I don't think that's taking it too far. If Brian Lannis wants to report on the religion of woke, there are plenty of other networks that would give him that opportunity. Well over 90% of the mainstream media identifies as woke. But I don't blame Brian Lennis for this. The responsibility lies directly with the executives at News Corp, Fox News. Now, this is just speculation on my part, but I think this is directly tied to ESG. If you don't know what ESG is, I'll give you a brief explanation. ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. The program was initially developed at the United Nations Environment Program Initiative back in 2005. It's being pushed and implemented today by the World Economic Forum. Basically, ESG is a new credit rating for corporations. But instead of rating companies on their financials, their payment history, their debt, ESG rates companies on how woke they are. Are you green? Do you promote social justice? Are you participating in our push to confuse children about their gender? Are you active in the fight to end mythical racism? Have you been baptized at Woke United Methodist? Well, KC, why don't corporations just refuse? Why don't they ignore ESG? They can. That option is available to them. But when they go to the bank for a loan, they will be declined. When they call up their vendors for services, they will be declined. Non-compliance with ESG will essentially force you out of business. That's why you're seeing Fox News promote stories about kids becoming transgender. Well, that's my theory anyway, but what else makes sense? Fox has been the number one network on cable for decades because they've been the lone conservative voice. The audience of dumbasses is split between all the other networks. So why would Fox News promote an issue they know their audience is going to reject? Compliance with ESG. Every year, damn near every major corporation in America releases their ESG report. Don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Google Walmart ESG, Target ESG, Verizon ESG. Read the reports for yourself. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This has been rolled out over the last, I don't know, two or three years, and very, very few in the mainstream media are talking about it. There's been no resistance to it. Eventually, the end goal is to implement ESG on everyone, individuals. You, too, will have your own ESG score. I told you guys before, the two amendments standing in the way of a woke utopia in America are the first and the second. They're going after the Second Amendment with gun control, but they know they will never be able to overturn the First Amendment through the courts, so how do they do it? ESG. You spread what they determine as misinformation on social media, taints your ESG score. Good luck finding a place to live. No one will rent to you. No bank will give you a mortgage. No company will hire you. But let me know what you think. Fox News infecting themselves with the woke fungus. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.